Boris Johnson's going to be getting loads of data put in front of him. And on that basis, he is going to make decisions about what restrictions we may or may not have before New Year, and I suspect almost certainly after New Year. And I'm, I'm asking you this, will today's COVID restrictions announcement, assuming it is today, uh, determine how you will vote at the next general election? So many people say to me, I've had enough, I'll never vote Tory again, I'll never vote Labour, whatever it may be. But it's significant. Boris Johnson is going to make a decision that is going to set the whole tone uh, for how we live over the next few weeks and probably few months. And I want to know if the announcement introducing more restrictions, or maybe not, will determine whether you still have faith in the government and whether and how you will vote at the next general election. You know, if, if that is your influencer, you might look kindly on the government at the moment. Uh, you could be lulled into a false sense of security and confidence because government leaks have been telling us that they are minded not to cancel New Year. Whoa, aren't we lucky we can keep our New Year? Well, that's what the leaks are suggesting. But be wary, I say. It was only last week that we had dire warnings of imminent close down from Boxing Day at one point before Christmas. But anyway, if the reports are accurate, we should hear something later today. Now, in many ways, I'm asking, what are they actually even thinking about? Because despite the credible evidence that the Omicron variant will not cause the devastation first predicted, there are still genuine fears uh, that uh, if this year's uh, Christmas has been reprieved, it's almost a done deal that the New Year uh, celebrations will be cancelled. It's possible that they may just have recommendations on how we uh, live and what we choose to do, which frankly has the same devastating impact uh, on people's choices that we saw before Christmas. But even if that is the case, I kind of go further because if we're not locked down over New Year, I'm absolutely surge certain that SAGE and a whole plethora of scientific modellers will urge a January lockdown of some sorts, a crucial circuit breaker, as they argue, or maybe longer. And frankly, it must not happen. And that's, don't confuse that with me being worried about the fate of the government. Um, either you'll vote for it or you won't, and I want you to tell me, certainly. But above all, I'm actually worried about the fate of this country, but also what this country has become. And I'm asking you, what have we become? Why have we been conditioned in the way that we have? Just think about this. After We're now about to enter the third year of COVID. So polls back lockdowns. The majority do. And don't tell me you don't trust polls, because frankly, they generally are an accurate snapshot. The majority of people in this country for some bizarre reason, back the lockdowns. People think it's a good idea to close schools. Uh, what's happened is we've become conditioned by a group think. It's basically gripped the nation as well as our politicians. We, the people, have become the servants, not the masters of our politicians. Now, you may have thought it was always like that, but that is not the function of democracy but that is what we have become. And I just know we need to shake off this panic-driven groupthink that is gripping the nation. Uh, as I say, we know it's gripping our political masters. There are signs that they're beginning to push back. We saw that with the cabinet insisting that they didn't impose restrictions uh, over Christmas. But the problem is we're constantly played by data, which is holding back rational thinkers, rational debate. And I, I'm myself a victim of this. Um, I've been subjected to a close me down from voicing such radi radical thoughts as this when I challenged how many of those COVID cases that were going into hospital as reported in London. And I said, do you know, 
How many of those, and it was half incidentally, are actually going into hospital for other reasons but test positive for COVID? And immediately the close down started. Do you not care about deaths? How many people have to die before you see sense? Where's the balance? Where's the context? And where's the appetite in this country to critically engage? So weekly figures, uh, the last published two weeks ago that I saw, uh, reported uh, something like 660 uh, deaths from COVID in England and Wales. In that same week, 11,000 people died. Now, where is the context? Because if you soak in the news, you are drawn into this groupthink that, uh, uh, that, that is making us make decisions about our lives and lose any sense of proportion and rational thinking. And if this groupthink produced coherent policy, that would actually be some relief. When I say coherent, I also mean consistent. You might actually be able to follow it. Some might even be able to rationalise it. So just a few days ago, for example, the self-isolation period for positive cases of this Omicron variant, it was slashed from 10 days to seven. Now, I reckon it'll be slashed to five, just like they've done in New York. And that will release thousands of people from self-imposed house, house arrest who can get back to work both in our vital public services and in the rest of our lives. In the past few weeks, we've seen mandatory isolation for people suspected of being in contact with an Omicron case that was introduced and then replaced with a much more benign regime. So it's all over the place. And you think, where's this coming from? Because it certainly wasn't based on science or data. And that's the problem. Our national behaviour now has been conditioned to the whims of a public health policy that is driven by modelling that, guess what, is consistently overstating and wrong. And I now know that that will lead to a barrage of comments saying, I don't understand modelling and it's unfair to criticise the scientists who produce this modelling. And I say simply this, if the charge against me is that I don't understand modelling and that I should in fact just accept it will be wrong, I mean, how illogical is that? Then I say to you, essentially, how irrational is it that we are prepared to shape policy that is destroying lives with this stop-start obsession of lockdowns and restrictions, which is just based on forecasts that we accept will be wrong, time after time after time. And how does that materialise? What do I actually mean by that? Well, look at the fates of families and businesses making choices in the run-up to Christmases. Do we order this? Do we book our tickets to travel? What supplies do I get in to run my pub, my hotel? Are we going to have a large gathering? Are we going to have a small gathering? And on and on it goes. It's a catastrophe. And let's face it, if you're running a commercial enterprise, Operating under those terms, no sane commercial organisation is going to assist you or lend you money. So where do you have to look to? You look to the government, who come with yet another bailout. And they come up with the bailout after causing the damage. It cannot go on. We're in a state where the government, but worse, we as a majority are prepared to accept how we socialise, where we travel, where to work. It is extraordinary. And those marvellous socialist regimes that I've talked about in Wales and uh, in Scotland, they have reminded us that imposing even tighter restrictions than those in England has basically failed. So I do rather hope that when Boris Johnson is looking at his data, that he will actually consider all the evidence, the wider evidence, and not feel just tempted to give us our liberty back for New Year's Eve, but to make sure that we have our liberty back beyond New Year's Eve, because the evidence is quite clear uh, that it does not support the stop-start return to measures that are challenging our mental and well-being, they're challenging our businesses, they're challenging our jobs, 
and that if that policy is introduced simply because of the capacity in the NHS, then I say fix the NHS, but do not leave us at the mercy of more restrictions and lockdowns and do not follow the herd mentality that because it is happening elsewhere, it must happen here. We proved in the summer when we had Liberation Day on July the 19th that we were right and we can do it again. And the sign of optimism I have, where you may feel inclined to vote again for this government, is that the cabinet before Christmas pushed back and said, do not bring in those restrictions. And the question for them is, do they have the spine, the bottle and the metal to do that again, given the current evidence? And if they do, will that mean you'll back Boris Johnson at the next election? Where will your vote go? And will it be based on these restrictions?